My neighbour has a relative that visits him at least once or twice a week. He's an old gentleman with a passion for motorcycles, old and new. And in the late 1950s, early 1960s, he was one of those original cafe racers or turn-up boys, whatever you want to call them. Every time he visits, he looks over the fence to see if I'm there with my bike. And if I am, he comes over and he'll chat to me for half an hour or an hour. And a few months ago, he brought to me a handful of old black and white photographs. Now, he was very much into the clubman racing scene back in the day, and he showed me photographs of himself rubbing shoulders with Giacomo Agostini and John Certes. But one particular photograph caught my eye, and that was a picture of him in his late teens, in his backyard, working on his Norton motorcycle, getting it ready for a race. A bike which I might add he still owns, although it's now stripped down in pieces and stored in his loft. He explained to me that privateers like him couldn't afford a dedicated racing bike so they would simply buy the fastest and best motorcycle they could afford they'd use it for work during the week then on a weekend it would be stripped back and prepped for racing on the weekend in effect the bike had its normal dress for weekday use getting into work and back and a special dress up kit or race kit for use in racing now in this photograph it had the oval plaque or number plate on the side of the bike bearing his racing number and the silencer had been removed from the exhaust so that the pipe was straight through giving him effectively maybe an extra one or two horsepower and just looking at it it reminded me of something that I'd seen. Now I went inside, went straight onto YouTube and logged on to the Chadwick Rider and had a look at one of his videos and there it was, the Triumph Bonneville T120 with the British Customs exhaust tips fitted. From there I logged on to the British Customs site and sure enough they also sold the racing number plaques for the side of the bike. Now it's nice to see that British Customs have taken on board some of motorcycle history by supplying items like this, which are very much like the items that were used back in the day. But as I scanned their extensive pages of individual custom parts and what they call weekend project kits, I came to realise something. Even with this current trend of easy bolt-on custom parts, we still tend to regard customising our Bonnevilles as something that is a permanent modification. You pay your money, you take your choice and you're stuck with it. But it doesn't have to be like that. Looking at the individual items available and the kits, it's easy to see that these can be fitted from anything from a few minutes to a couple of hours, which means you can swap and change these parts according to your mood. A bit like putting a new case on your phone. And you can literally change the look of the bike for an occasion or for a particular use that you're going to put it to. And I don't know of any other vehicle that is capable of allowing you to do that. Now taking the existing parts off your bike and putting these number plates and exhaust tips on your bike is literally half an hour's job. And to put that into perspective, that's probably about half the time it takes your wife or girlfriend to put a makeup on in the morning. And the only limitations really are your imagination and the depth of your pocket. We'll start with the number plates. These are a quality item cut from aluminium plate and it's quite thick plate, they're very sturdy pieces. I chose the black version and there's also a silver version. It's got a grey border cut round the circumference of the plate which gives it a nice classic look. And the great thing about this is it can be customised to suit your tastes. There are any number of specialised custom vinyl producers that can produce numbers or slogans to suit your style which are relatively cheap and easy to apply and once again you're not stuck with them forever once you get bored with them you can simply peel them off and replace them with something else now this is just a flat plate so it doesn't give any protection to the wiring electronics behind it so you should consider this to be an accessory that's strictly for dry summer use it's not an all-weather accessory now taking your existing side panels on and replacing them with these is literally a one minute job for both sides. It replaces the factory side panels with exactly the same fixing system with three appropriately positioned pegs which mirror the originals, albeit that they are a lot sturdier. They're made from aluminium which is welded onto the plate so you've got no unsightly screws sticking out of the front of the plate. And all in all it is a very user friendly design. 
it's definitely an accessory intended to make a statement and it's the ideal thing for a summer sunday afternoon blast down to the coast with your mates or a trip to your favorite biker cafe with your doris on the back now these cnc machine from billet exhaust tips are possibly the cheapest and easiest to fit exhaust modifications you could hope to buy they come in four different flavors there's the brushed solid brass like the ones I chose or there's three models in aluminium comprising of a black anodized finish, a brushed finish and a polished aluminium finish. British customs say that they won't enhance the performance of the bike and they don't make the exhaust any louder. Performance wise the bike does seem about the same but it does sound to me a lot louder that is until I actually tested it with a decibel meter. In actual fact, it is about the same as the stock pipes, but it seems louder because the exit from the pipes is directly below the rider instead of two feet behind it. But one thing I will say is that the way that sound is delivered to you is very, very different from the stock pipes. To me, straight out of the box, the T120 sounds like a whimpering puppy with every now and again, if you're lucky, you can just detect a slight burble from the exhaust. By contrast, these exhaust tips completely change the character of the exhaust note. There's a rough guttural back when you twist the throttle. And on the overrun, when you shut the throttle off to change gear, the exhaust crackles and snarls. like a two-headed hellhound from Mars. It's a great modification, and it only takes about 25 to 30 minutes to swap from your old pipes to these new ones. I'll show you how it's done. Starting on the right-hand side, the first thing you need to do is loosen the compression clip that holds the silencer onto the downpipe. Once that's done, remove the rear foot peg and the silencer will just slide off. Next, just loosen the fastener that holds the exhaust shroud on. Just loosen it so that you can slide the end of your new exhaust tip underneath it. Once everything is in place and you're happy with it, tighten the exhaust shroud back up. Put a little dab of Loctite on the end of the grub screw that holds the exhaust tip on and then screw it in until the exhaust tip holds firm. Don't go mad and over tighten it because you don't want to cause damage to your exhaust pipe which could cause problems when it comes to fitting another silencer in the future. Now the left hand silencer is a little bit different. Steps 1 and 2 for removal are the same. But you will find that the silencer is still held fast by an additional bracket which is situated underneath. And this also incorporates the rubber bump stop for the centre stand. Once you've removed the nut from this, carefully withdraw the bolt and while you do so support the silencer because the downpipe on the left hand side will no longer be supported and you don't want to unseat it. Carefully remove the silencer while holding the downpipe with one hand. Then included with your kit you'll find a pipe clip with a bracket welded to it and an L shaped bracket. Remove the rubber bump stop from your silencer and place it on the inside of the L shaped bracket there is only one hole big enough to take it and that's on the longer side of this bracket. Put the bracket underneath your expansion chamber for your cooling system and use the additional bolt provided in the kit to fasten it in place. It is a tight fit but it does fit. Right, so that's your bump stop for your centre stand now sorted. So it's time to get on with securing that downpipe and fitting your exhaust tip. Completely unfasten the clip that holds the exhaust shroud on. Remove the clip and the exhaust shroud should just pop up out of the way and this gives you room to work. Then remove the rear bolt for the rider's foot peg. You can then take the pipe clip with the bracket welded to it from your kit and slide it over your downpipe underneath the exhaust shroud. Make sure that you've got it seated properly and in the right position and then fasten the top of it in place by replacing that rear foot peg bolt. Don't tighten it up fully yet. You can then pop the exhaust shroud back in place, replace the clip and partially fasten it up. Then fully tighten the pipe clip that you've just put in and the bracket at the top of the pipe clip where it fastens onto the foot peg. After this you can fully tighten up the exhaust shroud. All that's left to do now is fit the exhaust tip 
and the procedure is exactly the same as the other side. Now as with the factory silence set there is a slight kink at the end of this downpipe which means you don't quite get as nice a fit as you did with the right hand side but to be honest it is barely noticeable and that's the job done. The brass against the chrome looks really classy and it also keys in with the brass coloured elements on the engine. It's a modification that like the side plates enhances not just the experience of ownership but also the satisfaction of riding the bike. This is the perfect dress up kit for a track day or just for scratching around the countryside. They might not suit the more conservative T120 owner but it is an authentic 60s look and it's worth the money for that glorious exhaust note alone. Now I can already see in my mind's eye those comments that are going to pop up from this video telling me that the pea shooter exhausts are a classic feature of the Bonneville and that I should have left them alone. So let me explain why I've got rid of them, at least for now. The silencers that come with the current T120 are totally wrong. For a start, they're twice as long as they should be, and they're also a lot fatter than they should be. In fact, I have a sneaky suspicion that these silencers are just a proprietary part that Triumph has bought in and adapted in an attempt to make them fit the bike. Because to be quite honest, they don't fit the bike. Both silencers stick out at odd angles and from the back they're not even symmetrical and in an attempt to make the best of a bad job Triumph have pulled them so close into the rear swing arm that maintenance and cleaning of the rear swing arm is virtually impossible. With the stock silencers in place cleaning and lubing your chain is a pain in the ass because Triumph have left you with virtually no room to work and I find it totally incredulous that Triumph thought it was okay to release a bike from the factory that required the silencers to be removed before you could adjust your chain. Now I am looking for some pea shooter silencers that will work with this bike but for now these exhaust tips suit me. I think they look great, they sound fantastic but most importantly they have completely uncluttered the rear end of that bike so general maintenance now is a breeze. Add to that the fact that the bike has now probably shed about six kilograms. Personally I think these tips are a winner. I'll leave a link for British Customs website for these two products but be warned these exhaust tips seem to come in and go out of stock with amazing rapidity. Well, that's about all I've got time for this week. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Please like and subscribe. I'll be back next week as usual and I'll see you then.